this up just a little bit. Um, I can't. I've created a routing system for the polonium. It needs it. I mean, I haven't built a supercritical phase shifter yet. I'm nowhere near ready. But the pressurized reaction chamber, all I need is enough fluoride, fluorite dust. Although I could let it accumulate in here, or in these tubes, or in the waste barrel, especially in the waste barrel. Polonium doesn't decay in waste barrels. Although, that prompts the question of when it, where it does decay. I can't really afford to lose the stuff. And then over over here is the is the switch to trip the solar neutron activator. That override switch I mentioned. I'm gonna take this out. This too. Assuming I'm getting any cooperation here. Yeah, there we go. Now there's another another thing that's five by five by nine. Uh, 348 ticks. I forget how much, how long that is in seconds. Anyway, um, there's another thing here that's five by five by nine. It's a thermoelectric boiler. Um, in this quest line here. I want to get a higher burn rate. I mean, I. Problem is, I need sodium first. And it's not something I have in abundance. Although it is something I'd like to get in abundance. Um, <coughs> to that end, I've installed this electrolytic separator to take directly from the. On the tank, and I, and I'm making sodium and chlorine, just in case I need hydrochloric acid. But the sodium can be used as coolant. The problem is I don't know how much of it I need to use as coolant. But think of all the stuff I have here. Uh, I suppose once I run out of brine, then I can just, or, or maybe even run low on it, then I can just um, route water back to. The thermal, uh, the evaporator here. I threw in another lever here so I can turn, turn the flow of water on and off. I have been doing quite a bit, haven't I? So, hmm. there is, however, only one thing I need to do before I can turn the reactor on. And that's to move this induction assembly over to around here. I can't put it out of the chunk. The whole thing needs to be in the chunk. Otherwise, well, I think I've already discussed what happens when this reactor, um, when I leave the reactor to its devices and it runs out of, and it fills up on steam or power or anything like that. Hmm. All right. Where's my um, ultimate pressurized tube? No, I'm looking for my ultimate conduits. <laughs> when did I run out of them? Did I run out of them? I can't have. Maybe I didn't, don't know it, or maybe I just never made any. That makes more sense. Well, I'm going to fix that in a hurry. Um, let me just take my Elite Universal cables. I know I've only got eight of them, but... Yeah, I do seem to like throwing stuff around here, don't I? Um, that's osmium. I think I can put that back now.
And I've got advanced universal cable here, I can just upgrade it. Oh yeah, and I've been making fissile fuel here. Hydrofluoric acid, uranium oxide. If you know how to refine fluorine using silk... Wait, did I just... I meant to take two of these. Anyway, if you know how to make fluorine, or refine fluorine in the enrichment chamber to be nice and efficient, then you can get a lot of fluorine out of um, out of a block of ore. I think it's six. And after you've done that, you make sulfuric acid. Now that's really going to be the bottleneck here. Because I think we all know, it's, know how hard sulfuric acid is to make. Or, but it's not the sulfuric acid itself. It's the sulfur used to make the sulfuric acid. Now I got a hold of a lot of this stuff. But it, it doesn't make that much comparatively. Okay, there's a reason why I'm doing this. It, well, I think by now you know how the um, upgrading process works for cables. So I'm going to take these here. Take one set of Elite Universal cables because I don't want that other to take up space. And there. That ought to be enough. Oh yeah, I also moved the isotopic centrifuge to be closer to the chemical infuser. And I gave myself a nice window. I had some bare glass panes, I used those. It's got a lovely view of the reactor, and the turbine, and the assembly. But, I can just glance out there and see just how low the coolant is. And that's the important bit. Let me just stow some of this. Hmm. What was I doing with this map again? Did I use it yet? Oh yeah, that's to the plague asylum. Maybe if I got my hands on another map. Okay, so a junction box. Instead of being an output junction box, maybe this should be an input junction box. Okay, let me just take this apart. Don't worry, even though you heard the glass shattering sound, the glass did not actually shatter, it's still intact. Now I'll have to put it near the turbine, but I'll also have to allow for um, the thermoelectric boiler. Speaking of which, the thermoelectric boiler is going to require something of a change in how, in what's routed to where. What if it says metadata in it? Yeah, I had to make some room. I suppose I had to make some room. So, um, where should I put this? I don't want to put it in here, because again, I might need that for routing things to the thermoelectric boiler. Maybe instead what I ought to do put this right here and then the back yeah the back accepts inputs the front accepts outputs 
and the rest of it, I guess, can be um, an exchange. Now, here's an interesting fact. At the, when I'd finished filming the last, ep last episode, of, I had killed 77 of these things. I don't know, it was just... I thought they... I only thought they showed up in, the, in like, mountains or, or high places, but... Apparently they're pretty standard. It doesn't really matter what what shape this is as long as it's a rectangle. Which means arguably that it does. The induction cell. The induction provider. Oh boy, yeah. Um, I gotta add the roof. And some extra space. <laughs> in case, um, in case I need it. Tractor last one. Ten units? How many is that per side? Um, I think it's like four, four, and two. So four on this side, four on that side. No wonder nothing gets done around here. And then, I think I had the two in the front. Three, five. Couldn't have had any left over, could I? Whoa, wait a minute. I think I know what I'm... Actually, what I should be doing is um, put the induction port here. The induction port there. Um, yeah. Let me. Actually, I don't think I can configure it until it's built. How did I have this? I suppose it would be handier, though, if I put the induction port here instead. And then built it um, sideways. See, there's another three of these things. Who was I? Oh yeah, sideways. Oh, yeah, six. Could put some of it on the top in case I want, in case I felt like climbing. to put this together. Oh wait. Yeah, I was thinking of how to how to use the glass. And I guess there's room for two of them in the front. There we go. Yeah, now we're finished. Where's my configurator? thing about this is that the, is that when they hit you they sound like they're eating you 
Anybody else notice that? There'll be nothing left of me but a skeleton by the time they're through if I if I let them. What was I configurating? Um, output. Yeah, thank goodness it retained its energy too. So what about? Well, actually, I need another junction box. Because you remember why I had the first one. Now, originally, building the first ultimate uh, energy cube was a um, big deal. But... Now... Well, I've built these two huge multi-blocks, plus... Um, plus the induction cell, which is an accomplishment of its own. So building these shouldn't be a hassle.
And here it is. Another energy cube. Maybe I'll make the um, top of it an output. Or the sides. Maybe just everything except the back. That would help. Because um, I'm going to have to wire this in such a way that it doesn't get in the way of another 5x5 five by five by, uh, another 5x5 five by five space meant for the thermoelectric boiler. I'm kind of thinking that there's a lot of cables that are probably going to get in each other's way. I'll have to factor all that in. And then there's the... Um, the additional input, oh yeah, these are exchanged. Um, the additional input from the rest of, from the other power sources, I can't just leave that out. So that can be more or less direct. Um, what I can do is connect these advanced universal cables overhead and there see now there's uh, power coming into the uh, induction matrix but none coming out of it um, and since this connection is obsolete. I'll just take it out. But there's another connection I have to think about, and that's um, and that's going to places like the machine room, which as of right now are pretty much starved for power. This is where the junction box being a junction box comes in. I'm going to string the cable. I'm going to put it down here so that I can reach it and it won't interfere with. Um, Won't interfere with the other one. It won't connect to it by accident. So it's something I'd rather not have happen. I can just about reach it. I, oh yeah. I may end up having to make more advanced universal cable, come to think of it. It's not hard. And then, if I could just get the right... Yeah, here we go. I was talking about an accidental short between between the uh, the power coming from the machine room and the and the power going to it. Or, well, you get what I mean. 
I want to make absolutely sure that what's coming from uh, the power sources is separate completely from what's coming going to them. So, well, I'm out of cable. Just. But that's only advanced cable. I should still have some basic cables. And a leftover bit of infused alloy. So if I were to try... There we go. Yeah, it's got the power going all right. Um... You know, there isn't much more ominous than, a, than doing this on a rainy day. Um... The problem is my fuel supply is still... I guess you could say being mixed. How much of it do I have? So I think by the time all this is done... Actually, I'm not sure how much I'll have by the time and the whole the process finishes um but i have some time to wait i guess 